At this point, we know a lot of things about energy. We have a good feel for what energy is, both potential and kinetic. We know that energy is conserved in that it just doesn't disappear. We know how to calculate work, W equals FD. We know how to calculate kinetic energy, EK equals one half MV squared. And we know how to calculate mechanical forms of potential energy, EP equals FAV times D, or in the case of gravitational potential energy, EP equals MGH. So, it's time to put all this knowledge together and solve some real-life problems. Example 1. A baseball is dropped from 1 meter off the floor. What is the ball's velocity just before it hits the floor? So, let's start with our equation E before equals E after. Our energy is conserved. In this case, the ball starts at a height, so in the before side, it has gravitational potential energy. And at the end, it loses all that potential energy as it falls, and the energy is converted into kinetic energy. The ball has velocity, so that's on the right-hand side. Let's insert our equations. And again, our equations come before the numbers. We notice that we have mass on both sides of this equation, so we can actually cancel the m's. Note that some students would be tempted to just start plugging in numbers right away and might get really confused as they're trying to figure out the energies without any masses. By working with the equation, we see that we simply don't need mass. We just proved that the final velocity would be the same even if the ball was bigger or smaller. Next, let's rearrange our equation to solve for the after velocity. We're trying to get the V by itself on the left. So to get rid of the one half, we can just multiply both sides by two. Then to get rid of the squared, we just do the opposite and square root both sides. And we're ready to solve for V. Now we can put brackets in place of our remaining variables and plug in the numbers and then calculate. V equals 4.4 meters per second. So how accurate is this answer? Would the ball actually be going exactly 4.4 meters per second? Well, we know that energy is never lost. So the E before equals E after, or conservation of energy, is perfectly accurate. But does every little bit of potential energy get converted into kinetic energy? Well, it is true that there would be a tiny bit of energy that would be lost due to air resistance. So we could say that the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy and energy lost due to air resistance. In this particular case, with a baseball, the energy loss due to air resistance would be so small that we couldn't even detect it. So our answer of 4.4 meters per second would be very accurate. Example 2. This time the baseball is thrown up into the air with an initial velocity of 15 meters per second. How high does the ball go? Starting again with E before equals E after. Energy is conserved. In this case, the opposite is happening in that the ball has velocity at the beginning. So it has kinetic energy on the left hand side, E before. And on the right, we know that it's high up at the top, so it only has potential energy. So let's insert our equations. Again, equations before numbers. And again, we can see that we cancel the masses. Next, let's rearrange our formula to solve for the height, h. And to get h by itself, we see that we're currently multiplying by g, so the opposite is dividing by g. And whatever we do to the left, we do to the right. And we end up with h equals 1 half v squared over g. Now we can put brackets in place of our variables and plug in our numbers. 
and then we calculate h to be 11.5 meters. So it rises to 11.5 meters above where it was thrown. And at the very top of its flight, all the kinetic energy has been converted into potential energy. The velocity is zero, no more motion energy at the top, and the height is a maximum. In this tutorial, we combined all of our energy knowledge to solve real life problems. Knowing that energy is conserved, we can always start our problems with E before equals E after. We consider what's happening before and after or at the start and end of our problem. If there's velocity, then we know we put EK for kinetic energy. And if there's stored energy, then we know we put EP for potential energy. We should always stop and consider whether there's significant amounts of energy converted to other forms. When we rearrange our formula, we can substitute numbers and then solve the problem. 